All right, so we're back. Got it, everything set up. So what we're going to go ahead and do, is we're just going to go and take our little itty bitty set screws and put them into their respective homes. Line up our drill. Uh oh, we're sliding. Ship, ship, mayday, abandoned ship. Lock that down a little bit better. Apologize, nation. Thought it had locked down tight. <clears throat> we do now, though. We're just going to thread that through. And there are a total of six. There's two here, two on the bottom, and then two on the back side. I'm not going to put you through the brutality that is the whole procedure. I'm just going to show you these few shots and back you up and show you what the rail looks like. Apologize for the jerkiness. I'm working. It's the first time as a solo cameraman. Tell me what y'all think. Am I doing a good job? Hopefully y'all like it. That's coming along though. So anyways, so I'm going to put the rest of those little set screws in and uh, be right back. Alright Nation, we got the uh, rail cover, uh, the handguard, excuse me, assembled. Uh, I'll worry about timing the muzzle device later because uh, I'm, I'm just going to have to tear all this back down again anyways to go ahead and torque it. Like I said, just wanted to get it out of the way. I promise y'all I'd show you. What I want to show you next is... You see that? Let me turn that around to where you actually can read it. Sun Devil Manufacturing. See that plus and minus sign? You know what that means? With this rifle, I can regulate the gas flow coming out of my gas tube. I can shut it completely off and have a bolt action. Or I can tune it, especially with this one, since there will be hand loads going through this particular weapon. I can tune it for the gas that is coming through to get the proper proper ejection pattern whether I want it to come out at four o'clock three o'clock one o'clock it doesn't matter and uh, I have one more system that needs to be installed a digs gas key retrofit comes with uh, your set screws or your allen head screws your allen wrench there's the actual see here get the glare out there's the actual gas key itself it's not hard at all. They give you even some Loctite. And that's another reason why I'm not tightening everything down. I got to go back through. I broke all the Loctite, so I got to go back through and do redo the Loctite on this rifle. But if y'all are interested in seeing how this is installed and actually seeing this in action, leave a uh, a comment down below and uh, let me know what you think. And uh, I'll be more than happy to show you how it's installed and how it works and, and show it in actual action. But we're going to go ahead. Oh, and for those of you that caught this, the reason why I did not headspace this barrel to this bolt is because these are a match set. Same way with uh, another rifle, the other SPR that I'm in the process of building that I will show you all in a later date. The bolt and the barrel are already headspaced and they're already matched to each other. No other bolt, no other barrel. That's, uh, that's the tightest lockup you can possibly get with that particular setup. They will work potentially. Potentially they will work in other rifles but uh, they work best in this one. So. And I will be also using the Raptor by Rainier Arms or uh, AXTS uh, AX TS is actually who manufactures it. Rainier is just one of the people who are an outlet. There's another company out there also that offers it too. I'm not familiar with their name. I don't forgot it now, but highly, highly recommend this charging handle. I have uh, many, many other charging handles that are uh, of different design from BCM, uh, Badger Ordnance. Uh, one or two others uh, that I have 
and so far and versus the stock one so far this is the beefiest one it's the best one that I've seen so far anyways enough of me jabbering and yabbering next I guess what we can go ahead and do is since you've all seen that is I will show you how to lap whoops excuse me for the screen adjustment I'll show you how to lap your scope rings so that way they are completely aligned and there is no deviation whatsoever so what we're going to do is is I got this Sinclair lapping kit it does the one inch and the 30 millimeter tubes, 32 millimeters, the big one and the small one. What we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this LaRue SPR 15 uh, mount, dismount it from this scope, and then actually show you the process. So, be right back. Stay tuned. Alright, so I went ahead and applied my lapping compound and installed the uh, lapping tool. Oops. Need to tighten the bottom ring. Down. Just loosen this one up a little bit. Now, this design is actually made for scope rings that mount on a half shell like that instead of from the side. So all I'm going to do with this is, is I'm going to make a few passes on it. Tighten these up just a little bit. Make sure the bottom part is tight. As tight as you can get it. I'm just going to take some of the grittiness out of the actual finish of the scope rings themselves. Got it a little too tight apparently. There we go. You're just going to sit there and work it back and forth. Applying an equal amount of pressure, as equal as you can, and just working it back and forth. By pressure, I mean downward, your downward force pressure, as equally as you can. You want to get about 70, 75%. of the material, your anodized finish, off. Already I can feel a difference. It's much, much smoother. So, you're going to keep doing that and wipe it clean, reapply your compound, and do it again until you're satisfied with your results. I'm going to go ahead and put it on, on hold for y'all, finish doing this right here, slap her back together, and uh, call her done. Stay tuned, be right back. Real quick, I wanted to show you, uh, once you have done this, get that initial grid out, what you can do is, because as you saw earlier, I wasn't really tight, you can go ahead and tighten up your screws and get a little bit better fit. You, I don't know if you can actually see the color difference. Let me help you out here. See how it's uh oh. See how it's a dark gray right here and it's a light gray right here. That's the actual metal being taken away or the finish being taken away off the ring so it is working and smoothing itself out and as you go along go ahead and tighten your rings back up so finish this up be right back all right 
we got our scope rings lapped. Now, see that high spot right here? These two gray areas are the actual spots that were shaved down using the compound. Now what you can do is you can keep going until you're satisfied with the results. I'm going to do it one or two more times just to polish it up and not get it as a sheeny. But see there's that one. That one's got a high spot. That one's got a high spot. That one's got a high spot or, or a low spot being that gray area. Because you can see this part was actually the part that was shined. Or polished or lapped, however you want to classify it. And that just goes to show you that they say everything's machined and it's in tight tolerances. But it's made by humans. It can always be better. There goes one of the little, little screws can always be better that attention to detail that handmade handcrafted stuff you you just can't beat it you cannot beat it versus the out of the box what people say they they have done on a machine now granted a machine can always be more accurate but when you're trying to crank out products little pieces and, and scope mounts and stuff like this you set a general tolerance of okay that that's good enough it can be plus or minus so much five thousands ten thousands but when you're doing with a project like this where you have to be dead on it's good to take that time and, and slow down and do as much as you can by hand anyways so that's the process of the valve lapping or excuse me the I'm using valve lapping compound but that's the process of lapping your scope rings I'm going to set it back up I've cleaned everything off I'm going to put some new compound back on and do it one more time. Try and get everything as even as I possibly can and uh, put it together. Call it a day. Stand by. All right. I got them washed and cleaned up. You see where your low spots are. Everything is now parallel to every bearing. See, each one's different. That just shows you the inconsistencies I was talking about. Now, another thing to remember is these are matched to their mates. So, remember which ones went where. Which bearing to which bearing cap and whatnot. Just show you. See the low spots? And I'm not too terribly worried about those low spots because the main surface area on all the four bearings are for the most part uniform uh, I'm happy with them, I'm satisfied with, with what I got, I know I have a true straight surface for which to torque down my scope and I'm not skewing anything inside the lens so anyways uh, going to torque this down, put it together and uh let you see what the finished product looks like. Stay tuned. All right, guys. Here you go. She is complete. Up front, we have a Surefire MB556K muzzle brake. Cytron S3 6 to 24. 24, 21, 24, magnification. Odinworks 223 wild barrel with the Odinworks low profile gas. Spikes tactical melanided gas tube. Of course, on the other side of our receiver, we have a PDQ. Flip this around. Yeah, you like that one handed action. Hold on a second. There we go. Apologize for the fumble. Uh, Luth AR MBA modular buttstock assembly. The Rainier Arms ambidextrous charging handle. Can't rack it back. Let's see here. There it goes. Uh, just a plain Jane 
bolt carrier made by Young Engineering. Same with the bolt, uh, polymer dust cover, the PDQ, uh, the Geisley DMR National Match High Speed Trigger, and a LaRue SPR15 uh, cantilever mount. The next video, I'm going to be showing you all how to tune the DMR trigger. But past that, I hope you all enjoyed the ride, uh, enjoyed the build. If you have any questions, any comments, likes, concerns, anything, like I said, as I've always said, if you just want to talk in general, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, share, and uh, hope to see you soon. As always, y'all be easy, shoot straight, be safe.